Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Small Town Tourist Podcast, where we experience and explore everything that makes small towns great. I'm your host, Abby, and today we are talking with one of my favorite business owners in the St. Cloud area. This episode is going to sound a little bit like an advertisement. It's just because I'm super passionate about it. I've had this happen quite a few times, actually. I'm just talking to a lot of really cool people that do really cool things that I'm into, which is kind of the whole point of this podcast. But anyway, we are talking to the owner of Crafts Direct and Backshed Brewing, Scott Schlecht. This is a family-owned business in Waite Park, and it is honestly like my favorite place to go shopping because I am a serial hobbyist. We get into that in the episode. I always have a project that I'm working on or a craft that I want to be making or something I saw on TikTok that I want to try out. And what's great about Crafts Direct is they literally have everything you could ever need to complete those projects that you see on the internet. And Backshed Brewing is attached to it and they make some really great craft beer and have a really cool place to hang out. So I thought it'd be fun to share the story of Crafts Direct and Backshed Brewing and Scott was awesome and invited me into the space and we got to record at Backshed and it was just a wonderful conversation. So I hope you enjoy our time hanging out with Scott from Crafts Direct and Backshed Brewing. And if you're ever in the area, stop in, pick up your crafting supplies and get yourself a brew over there because it is incredible. Once again, not an ad, just a passionate person. start every podcast, I will have you give your name, where you're from, and what you do. I am Scott Schlecht. I'm from Sartell, Minnesota, and I am one of the owners of Backshed Brewing and Crafts Direct. And that's where we're sitting right now. We are in the back room here at Backshed Brewing, which is a place that I'm actually at every Wednesday to host bar trivia. So kind of doing back-to-back nights here. This is a Thursday when we're recording, but it's such a wonderful place. And this whole basically complex you have built in Waite Park is such a huge part of the community and I wanted to share the story of it. Well thank you for that and you know a lot of credit goes to my parents because they did start it back in 1990 actually. So how did Crafts Direct get started? Yeah Crafts Direct got started in 1990 it was actually Ben Franklin Crafts and it was in the Marketplace Center so if everyone knows where Pizza Ranch is it used to be over there and it started you know, a smaller little store, you know, 9,000 square feet. And I helped them set it up back in the day. And I would work sporadically between breaks and that kind of stuff. But my dad actually, we were in Painesville at the time. And then he was working for Ben Franklin Corporate. And then found a partner out of Monticello that had a Ben Franklin store. And then they put the, the Ben Franklin here in 1990. And so they did that. And then they expanded in 93 in the location that they were at. And I can't remember the exact year when they actually bought the property where Crafts Direct currently is at. We changed the name in 96 to Crafts Direct. The Ben Franklin Franchise and Corporation all went bankrupt in 96. And we were a franchisee and we wanted to disassociate from that. So we changed the name to Crafts Direct in 96. And it's been Crafts Direct ever since. Was there ever like a, someone with a passion for crafts, like specifically that got the ball rolling on this? <laughs> my mother, maybe. <laughs> but, you know, my dad started out, you know, working for Woolworth and then worked for um, Ben Franklin in Paintsville and then eventually started working for Ben Franklin Corporate doing store setups. And then he was a district manager. And at one point when, you know, he put the store in here, he was in charge of the central region for craft stores for Ben Franklin, and there were only three regions. So that's kind of where he got involved. You know, he was really involved in retail, and then he got put in that position with crafts. You know, my mother does a lot of crafts still to this day, but I don't think that was necessarily what fueled (laughs) the adding the craft store to the family. Well, I appreciate the craft store being here. I'll tell you that much. I call my basement a mini crafts direct because I'm always starting a new project and I'm always picking things up at crafts direct. I know. I love it to see what people pick up. And then you've been such a great supporter and, you know, coming to the store and picking up different things. Like you're just a perfect example of a crafty person that we love. A serial hobbyist there is what go. I've labeled myself as it. because like every quarter I'm like, oh, I'll see something on TikTok and be like, I can do that too. Right? And then it's in the car to Crafts Direct to get all the supplies to bring yeah. it home. <laughs> exactly. You know, and times have changed so much with now, 
you know, everything used to be books and patterns and all the things that we'd have. And now it's the access to seeing it on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or Facebook. Like, I mean, in different websites, I mean, there's just so much access to the information. It's just then where do I buy this stuff? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. But, you know, when you talk about some of those things, that's really evolved a lot from us where people get their inspiration in a digital format and then hopefully come and pick up the pieces in order to put it together and make it their own. And they definitely do. I follow a lot of different crafters around the area and they always get their stuff at Crafts Direct. Thank you. That's so awesome. (laughs) It's absolutely amazing. You can get literally anything in that store. I, my husband would be like, what do you, what could you possibly need? I'm like, just walk in there. You need everything. (laughs) Oh, I love it. And it's so fun because there are a variety of different things and, you know, crafts across the board. You know all about it, you know, between floral and decorations Mm -hmm. and home decor. But then, you know, there's sewing and yarn and basic craft type things, too. But then, you know, the gifty things and um, you just never know what you're going to kind of run into. We've evolved that quite a bit from back, you know, when we first put the store in to kind of evolving into different type of um, gifts and that kind of stuff that you know you wouldn't normally think like oh it's a craft store but you know we have a lot of gift and home decor type things that you know just the name wouldn't necessarily say right that's um, what my sister is into because my sister is not the make it herself kind of person whereas i am yeah but she still loves coming to crafts direct Mm -hmm. and she lives up in the alexandria area so we like carve out time to get down here because she loves the home decor side of things yeah that i mean you know and that's the thing you know be able to you know hopefully make a great shopping experience for everyone no matter what they like you know starting with the crafts but it has evolved a lot into you know other things and decor and that kind of stuff but you know crafts is our main heart and soul that we put into it and that we're always looking at so and what's really cool is that you guys used to have like a little restaurant in there we did which was fantastic and now are you still looking for someone to lease that space we are looking for someone to lease that Someone might have thrown out an idea at one point. What was, was I will, grilled cheese? I will throw it out here again. If someone <laughs> wants to do this, please do it. I don't have enough time in the day. But I think that you need to open a grilled cheese shop, yes. call it Cheese and Crafters. Yes. And then do like oh. rotating soups and special grilled there cheeses. You go. We actually, one of our best selling sandwiches was our pretzel grilled cheese. See? It was like nonstop. People loved it. Um, Yeah, it just didn't work out after COVID and all the things. And we're like, we need to focus. And we might have decided to do this other side project that's here on the property instead of focusing on a restaurant. We may have decided to do a brewery instead. Yeah, let's get into that because (laughs) at first when I heard that you were turning the outlet space Mm -hmm. into a brewery, I was very upset because... I love the outlet space right? (laughs) because I love a good deal. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. But then when I heard what the whole vision was Mm -hmm. for Backshed, I'm like, okay, yeah, I think I'll survive without (laughs) the outlet being there. So how did Backshed come about? Yeah, well, you know, because, you know, it was our outlet store. It's actually the original building on this property. Oh, really? Okay. And then if you look there, outside the one wall is Warehouse for Crafts Direct. But um, that was the original building when... um, We started dabbling over here. It was like seasonal merchandise, and it was all Christmas trees. At one point, there was like over 200 Christmas trees in this location. Like, you came in here in November, and it could be cold, and it was like a gajillion degrees in here. Just because we had them all lit up, and we had them numbered, and all. I mean, it was insanity. Literal works of art. Yeah, so then when we moved from our Marketplace location to our current Sundial location... We're like, um, we did some of the tree stuff, but we took a lot of the seasonal out and then eventually morphed it into an outlet store. Um, But then we had our marketing department, graphic design and all the kind of stuff. And my brother and I would walk up here and we'd look at things and then we'd look at numbers and we're like, you know, for a lot of space, it's not doing a lot. And we kicked around ideas upon ideas. But the funny thing, like whenever we would travel, like the number one job wasn't necessarily to find the best food, it was to find the best beer. Because we'd find food somewhere, <laughs> you know. It's kind of how it evolved. And then we kicked around different kind of concepts and all those kind of things, whether it's a tap room or whatever. But we had this mutual friend, Chris, who is our brewer, that Jason knew from a beer club that he joined with a friend of his. But I knew Chris before that, like my wife taught 
his kids in preschool and we played softball together at church and so I had this connection and he had this connection and then we ended up buying this little pilot system that would do one keg at a time and put it in the back shed of Crafts Rack and it's back shed and it was like a year and a half or so that he just kind of went out there and you know see how the water reacted, see what he could make. see Because he had home brewed for over 15 years. I mean, okay. he had tons and tons of experience. But he was willing to give it a shot, and we started it out that way and then found some used equipment. And I think we started up here, yeah, it was right after COVID that we bought it and brought it up here and left it in here until we could do the build out and that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's going to be two years in August. That's so, crazy. Fastest yeah. two years ever. I know, it just flies by. You know, I mean, Crafts Direct is going to be, well, it's officially 33 years. It opened July 5th, 1990, but we opened in our sundial location in August. So, like, we kind of have back-to-back weekends of anniversary. So, like, we have the back shed anniversary, which will be two years on the, like, 18th, 19th, 20th weekend. And then the next weekend, the 25th, we start the Crafts Direct anniversary sale and all those kind of things because, you know, it'll be 33 years that, you know, Crash Direct has been around and it's been moved to August because we basically moved in here in August and Sundown. It's just so amazing what you guys have built from being a Ben Franklin franchise to mm-hmm. literally the largest craft store yes. in, in the state, right? In the Midwest even? Well, we proclaim to be the largest locally owned and operated because there's a, a chain out there that has bigger as far as size wise. Okay. But, you know, we used to be the biggest until that happened. I would still keep calling yourselves the biggest because <laughs> service wise, you guys are fantastic. Oh, thank you. Like, literally, yes. every staff person in there oh. is smiling, they're happy, mm. they're asking me what I'm making, yeah. and that's what every crafter wants to hear. Right. <laughs> we have some super great people over there that have been with us for a long time and super knowledgeable, and um, we're just really blessed with that. But, yeah, we. Try and provide knowledge and information that you can't get anywhere and try and, you know, source product that people people are going to love and hopefully they'll keep coming back and, you know, enjoy the products when they get home. So it's really fun to talk to people when they come in and what they're looking for or unique projects and there's always something like they want to do something I've never heard of and you're trying to figure out how in heaven's name are we going to make this happen or they want to stick two weird things together like what kind of glue do I use? I'm like... Well, if I was going to do it, I would use this, but it doesn't necessarily mean I've done that before. But so there's always something fun like that. What I think is really cool, what has proven to be successful is the wives go to Crafts Direct and the husbands get dropped off at the brewery. (laughs) 2022 was wedding year for my friend group. My three best friends, we all got married in the same year. So it was countless trips back and forth here. We would drop our fiancés off here. We'd go do our (laughs) stuff. We'd get everything we need, meet them back here for a drink. It was perfect. Oh, yeah. I love... I think it was like one of the first weeks we were open and I think I was standing up here and I was looking and I I saw exactly that. It was like the women went this way, the dudes went this way, and then I saw the ladies come back with bakes and then they came in here. I'm like, that is what we intended it to be. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, just, I mean, kind of creating community within both areas kind of a thing and just a great place for people to come and hang out and have a great experience doesn't matter which spot you choose maybe you'll choose both which would be great we would love that (laughs) but uh you know that's really the goal so and you've done a great job with the community building on the side of events that you host here at Backshed Mm, like I mentioned I do bar trivia here every Wednesday and on average we have about 14 teams and that is year round which is unheard of I've been hosting bar trivia for gosh It's been six years now, and I've hosted at a lot of different places that Mm -hmm. have done it seasonally, that have done it year-round. On average, you're getting maybe six or seven regular teams, but you guys are consistently double that number. Mm -hmm. In the winter, those numbers are even higher, and you are building community. Like The people who come play trivia with me every week, we all get to know each other. We Mm -hmm. all get to know each other's team names. Like I've watched one team have two kids in the past couple of years. It's like I'm watching growing families. I love it. So fun to get to connect with these people in such a warm and inviting place. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that. And, you know, we made that huge mistake. We dropped you last summer and we're like, we're not doing that again. (laughs) We're keeping Abby all year long. We're going to make her come every Wednesday. But yeah, it's super fun. And like, you know, big events, like we do Santa and we do Easter Bunny. Like, it's just so fun to see the people come and bring their kids. And oh my gosh, Santa and the Easter Bunny, they, they're they fantastic. I just, it's 
you know, and we do that kind of stuff all the time. I mean, it's just, I don't know, kind of gives me goosebumps when I think of, you know, the things that we're lucky enough to be able to do and just have people, you know, find a great place that they can hang out. You know, we started doing here um, video game night. Oh, yeah, and I saw that. I How's that going? A, I think there was a couple of weeks in and someone left a comment, like, just having trouble meeting people and just was able to find a group of people that he enjoyed and they could hang out with. I'm like, oh, oh just, just start crying. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, to be able to do that in both areas, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, trying to create, you know, that connection with people. It's just, yeah, fantastic. And there's just so many wonderful memories that were created here. Mm-hmm. Even in just the past two years that you've had back shut open, I had my own bachelorette party here. Yes. We came out here and decorated jean mm-hmm. jackets and covered oh, them yeah. in glitter and oh, rhinestones. Yeah. And my friends still wear their jackets around. They're like, it. this was so fun. Right. What a great See, idea. You've combined them both. I did. We're perfect. I was in charge of my own bachelorette <laughs> party because I knew what I wanted. <laughs> I trust my sister, but I knew what I wanted. Right. Yeah, you're <laughs> heavily involved in the planning. Yes. I love it. Oh, that way you get what you want. So, exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, so cool. You guys have such a, just a wonderful place out here. So Thank what you. do we got coming up for celebrating the anniversaries? Yeah, for the uh, Backshot anniversary, we have things going Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think we have a DJ Friday night. Saturday, we have music outside all day um, and food and um, activities. We're doing a, a beer walk, Ooh. like a cake walk. Really? So instead of getting cakes, you get beer and or we're working with some community people to get some gift cards and other things. Oh, but, fun. You know, just trying to do a, something fun, something different. And then Sunday we have more music and we have our sip and shop outside, which, you know, bring in local vendors and do that kind of stuff. So that'll be, you know, 18th, 19th, 20th. And then um, the next Friday, the 25th, we start our anniversary ad for the craft store. And so that's 33 years. And we do huge... Huge sales throughout My the store. My wallet is quaking. <laughs> we just finished it up, so it'll it'll be coming out here in a couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, that's always you know a good sale. You know we have really great prices, and it's a great time to kick off your fall mm-hmm. season. And you know fall time comes around. I love just the feel of fall and decorations and that kind of stuff. So, and that'll run for a month. That'll run till the end of September. And uh, usually that first weekend. Um, when the Little Falls Craft Fest mm-hmm. Fair is going. We do like um, special like giveaways and that kind of stuff, and we're still planning that, but we'll do something that, that Saturday too. So That was always my favorite radio remote of the year, oh, is getting to come yeah. out here on that Saturday. Uh, oh, loved it. it lived so for good. it. <laughs> it was so good. You make it so easy on me. Like, oh, you just talk about the things you know, which you know uh, all kinds about craft, so you make my job super easy. <laughs> you know, like, hey, we're going to talk about this and this and this. And I'm like, yeah, let's talk about those my things. My favorite was when you rolled up with a cart full of gnomes. Oh, yeah. When the gnome craze had mm-hmm. first hit, you guys were on top of it. And right. you just rolled up to the table with a cart full of different gnomes. Yeah. I still have one sitting on my table. Oh. I don't take it off. He lives and there all year. Didn't we have one with the attractable the- legs and a guy came in like, I want that gnome. Yeah. He heard it on the radio and he <laughs> right. came in and he's like, I need this for my girlfriend. Yeah. I'm like, that is, that is powerful. It that was, was awesome. so cool. It was awesome. <laughs> oh yeah. That was a good time. So can you spill the tea on any of the giveaways that you're doing this year? Or is that still kind of under wraps? Oh my gosh. We're <laughs> still trying to figure out okay. exactly what we're going to do, you know, and how we're going to configure that. Cause we've been bouncing around different ideas and haven't landed on one yet, but that's usually the weekend we always do it. So just keep your eye out there. Follow us on some social media and the, you'll, you'll see what's happening. Yeah, follow the social media. Your daughter's in charge of it, right? Avalon takes care of most of the social media. Yeah, she's doing the Backshed social media and she's going to be doing the Craft Direct social media. She yeah. does such a good job oh, with thanks. all the updates and like the community management of it all. Yes, it is not an easy gig oh, to have. No. She's a rock star at yeah, it. She's doing an awesome job and just... You know, again, she's passionate about it. You know, she loves helping out and, you know, spreading the word and just doing it in a fun kind of way. So, um, so yeah, so follow us on the socials. You'll see uh, Avalon. You might see me. You might see my brother. I mean, I think we're doing a TikTok tomorrow. I've seen you guys doing your TikToks. (laughs) She makes us do those things. So, But they're fun. Yeah, they are really fun. It makes it a lot easier. She's like, you do this, do this. I'm like, okay, whatever. (laughs) Sure. Just Makes listen to your easy. daughter. She's got this. I know, right? And it's cool that she's third generation now yeah. with 
working under the Crafts Direct mm -hmm. umbrella. So yeah, it's really it's special. Really super fun. So cool. Awesome. Uh, well, Scott, thank you so much for letting me come and bombard you and oh my gosh, it's take so over much the back fun. room on Thursday night. Oh, it's so easy. <laughs> you make it easy on me, I tell you. Easy talking and just love your passion for what we do, too. I mean, it shows every time you show up and whenever I talk to you. So I big really fan, appreciate big fan. that. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Awesome. Thanks, Abby. Thank you so much for checking out another episode of the Small Town Tourist Podcast. Our theme song is Queen of Our Hometown by Rachel McIntyre-Smith. You can stream her music wherever you listen to music. And don't forget to follow her on socials at Rachel McIntyre-Smith. And her website is rachelmcintyresmith.com. If you're looking for more content from the Small Town Tourist, you can find me online on social media at the Small Town Tourist. Or you can check out the blog, thesmalltowntourist.com. If there's something that you'd like to hear me dig deeper into or something cool I should check out, do not hesitate to reach out to me. You can always send me an email, abby, A-B-B-E-Y, at thesmalltowntourist.com.